So here's the problem we're going to run into, Mason. Uh, unlike charges, and what actually moves in a circuit, protons or electrons? Electrons. Electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. The problem is that means we're having to think about negative numbers moving, which is yucky, which is yucky. So conventional current I wrote versus electron flow. Recall with our ski hill analogy, we said that a cell or a battery is like a chairlift, as Hannah pointed out. We said that current is like the skiers, as Brady pointed out, and that, let me get this right, Mr. Duick. Oh, yeah. Resistors, which is the generic fancy term for uh, loads, like light bulbs or iPods, whatever, the appliance, are like the ski hills where skiers lose height. One problem we encounter with this analogy is that in a circuit, the electrons flow from the negative voltage terminal through the wire to the positive voltage terminal. And what that means in my ski hill analogy is somehow the skiers ski up the ski runs and go down the chairlift. Blech. It means we're dealing with negative numbers. Blech. So we're going to fix that. We would like to say that current flows downhill, like water, because a river has current, and that gives us another analogy as well. We'd like to be able to say that. We'd like to be able to say that it flows from the positive voltage to the negative voltage. So we're going to focus on the positive charges, the nuclei, the protons. We're going to pretend that the positive charges can move. I know they can't, but it's so much nicer mathematically. We're going to say, ah, let's pretend they are. And you know what? Electrons flowing to the left. Sorry, left is that way for you guys. That's really mathematically the same as protons moving to the right. If you lose negatives, isn't that the same as gaining positives? And if you gain negatives, isn't that the same as losing positives? So the uphill flow of electrons is mathematically equivalent to the downhill flow of positive charges, as shown in a diagram in a little bit. Even though the positive charges don't actually move, where was the diagram? Up here. I think I have a diagram. Do I have a diagram in your notes? I did? Oh, OK, I didn't put it here for some reason. So. What we call current is actually the downhill flow of positive charges. And we've just defined it that way. Any electrician book, any electrician book, Mason, will show the current moving from positive to negative, even though in real life that's not what happens. It's just so much easier to think that way. Some books will call it. conventional current, because this is the convention that we have adopted in electronics. Grace, this is the result of Ben Franklin naming the charges the wrong way. He really should have made electrons positive, and he really should have let protons be negative. I know the p -p 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 protons positive trick wouldn't work anymore, but the rest of the math would be so much nicer, it'd be worth having to remember. So if we're asked about electron flow, electrons flow from negative to because unlike charges attract, but current flows from positive to. In other words, electron flow is always going to be in the opposite direction of the current. Is that OK, Josh? OK. Trust me, it'll make the math way easier. 
What that's going to mean then is in a battery you gain voltage, which makes sense, and going through an appliance you lose voltage, which makes sense because you guys, I'm going to move you apart if it doesn't stop. This is your last warning. Okay. So here's a picture. See the cell? Okay. And I added a new electronic device, a circle with an A. I'll talk about what that is. Tensei is going to put his phone away. He's not that important. Sorry? You're good. Draw the direction of the part A, electron flow. Electrons flow from what to what? From negative to positive. Electrons flow this way. which is what's happening in real life. But mathematically, that just means, Danielle, we're dealing with negatives all the time. <laughs> the current flows from positive to negative. And then part C, I said label all parts of the circuit but what I call this here. Ah, I love it. He said a cell. If there was two of them, technically that's a battery. Now, if you called it a battery, Martin, I'll give you full marks because also because when I'm typing these circuits up, it's a pain to always add extra batteries and be correct, which isn't really the good reason not to do it, but it's a pain. So uh, here's the cell. Uh, what's this right here? Wire, conductor, but in this case it's wire. Okay. This here is the circuit symbol for a resistor, some kind of load. Could be an iPod, could be a light bulb, although we do have a special symbol for a light bulb usually. Could be a stove. I don't know what's plugged into it. And then I have this thing here, and I'm going to give you a hint. This thing measures current in amps. If a voltmeter measures voltage, what do you think we call the thing that measures current? You'd think amp meter, and for some reason, I don't know why, they've dropped the letter P. It's called an ammeter. And it's symbolized with a circle and a capital A for amps. Just like a voltmeter is symbolized with a circle and a capital V for volts. So you'll see those in circuit drawings as well. Often the question will say, tell me what that ammeter would measure, and I'll be teaching you how you can calculate currents and voltages ahead of time. And that's why we're bringing our calculators. Benjamin Franklin. Yes? I bring a message from the future. I don't have much time. What is it? The convention you're setting for electric charge is backwards. The one left on glass by silk should be the negative charge. We were going to use the time machine to prevent the robot apocalypse, but the guy who built it was an electrical engineer. It, honestly, it drives electrical guys crazy that it's backwards. It's so much nicer. Anyways. says, answer the questions on the back page. You guys have some notes, if you turn, uh, some questions in your notes, yes? Okay. We're going to go over these answers in about 10 minutes. If I put a 10-minute timer up, we'll come back. And, oh, maybe for giggles, there might be some Timbits available for correct answers for this. If you've already gotten a Timbit, sadly, you'll be eliminated from the Timbits. But I'll still be collecting this for homework, and some of you need all the homework marks you can get because some of you are still my homework palusers, right? So let's mark these. Hey, what's an electric circuit? What did you say, Alex? OK. That's a good definition. A complete pathway that allows electrons to flow. What do I mean by a complete pathway? Well, remember we looked at that one example where you just attached a wire to one end of the battery and we said, yeah, nothing will flow. Nothing will flow. 
What were the four basic components of a circuit? Ted, you want to can't I do want a Timbit already or not? Okay, I owe you one, but now you're done. Give you your Timbit now. Okay, what do you got, Evan? Four basic components of a circuit. Okay, oh, you can do I'll get you one in a second. From which terminal of a battery are the electrons pushed? Someone who hasn't won a Tim bit yet. Katie. Ah, but from which terminal is conventional current measured? Okay. Hey, what's the difference between static electricity and current electricity? Someone who hasn't won a Tim bit yet. Someone who hasn't won a Tim bit yet. Katie, you just won a Tim bit. Josh. Yes. Static charges, they're gathered in one place, can't do anything. Now, when you get a shock from something, that's when they turned into current, and that's what you get a shock. But you built that charge up by not letting them move. What is electric current, someone who hasn't won a Timbit yet? Yeah. Okay. A really short definition would be, but if you wanted to give me the mathematical definition, it's really, I agree with you, the number of charges passing an area each second. In fact, amps is actually measured in coulombs per second. It's how many coulombs of charge come by an area per second. But yet moving charges, current is moving charges. It's the difference between static electricity and current electricity. Okay, Timbit for you. Someone who hasn't won a Timbit yet, what are the units? Someone who hasn't won a Timbit yet, what do I use to measure current? Okay, someone who has won a Timbit. If you say amp meter, I won't take marks off, but for some reason, the, just, no P. How is electron flow different from conventional current? Okay, someone who has won a Timbit, how are they different? Katie. So it says this, uh, as electrons flow through a resistor, and you can put in brackets a load, a light bulb, etc., uh, they encounter resistance. They encounter resistance, which can cause them to, well, slow down. It slows them down. What they're really doing is they're bumping into other atoms. And the same way as when you rub your hands together, it generates heat. As the electrons bump into other atoms, they lose some of their energy in those collisions. And one of the most common ways that that energy is lost is by turning it into heat or light or other stuff because we're clever. Wires have very low resistance. In fact, it's so low that Tensei, we're going to pretend it's a resistance of zero. We're going to pretend all of our wires are perfect because the math is easier. But lights, etc., have high resistance. The higher the resistance, the greater the work done, the more energy the electrons lose, the more heat you generate. Every circuit offers some resistance. I'm tired of writing the word resistance. 
how about capital R is going to be our abbreviation for a resistor? Okay. Every circuit offers some resistance to the flow of charge. The circuit symbol for a resistor is a series of short angle lines. In other words, you don't need to write this down if you want. There's a cell. There's a battery. There's a resistor. There's an open switch. There's a complete circuit with all four parts. Source, load, switch, wire, conductor. Okay. What's this resistance caused by? This resistance is due to electric friction. Where electrons collide with the atoms of the material they're passing through, just like you were trying to run through a crowded hallway. You would bump into some people along the way unless the hallway was completely empty. And if you do bump into people while you're trying to run, that would cause you to lose energy. You would slow down. This energy lost by the electrons heats up the material that they're passing through. You okay with that so far? And here's the key idea then. A loss of energy implies a loss of voltage because voltage is how much energy each charge has as a ratio. Voltage and energy aren't the same thing, but I'm telling you, if your energy goes down, your voltage goes down. In fact, we call it a voltage drop across the device. So, you ready? In physics, we tend to abbreviate. We don't like to write out full words. So, if you see a capital R, That's resistance. If you see a capital V, that's the voltage. Unfortunately, the letter C for current is taken up by something else very important. And the letter A for amps, which you might also be tempted to use for current, is also taken up by something else important. So this is the only one that doesn't make sense. We use an I, a capital I, for current. Why, Mr. Duick? Because not all physics was discovered by English-speaking people. Okay, sorry. So, here's a little chunk of a circuit. This letter I stands for what? What direction, which way is the current flowing? To the right. By the way, which way are the electrons flowing then technically? To the? OK. But we're just going to focus on current. And here's the resistor. This could be a stove. This could be your iPhone. This could be a light bulb, something. What's happening is you're going from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. Sorry, I thought I saw a headphone in your ear, Drew, and I was going to freak out. You don't have a headphone in your ear, do you? No. My bad. Something behind you just lined up perfectly, and it looked like it. Um, so look up for a second. Let's suppose I had a voltmeter, and my voltmeter measured that right here we were at 8 volts. And my voltmeter measured that right here we were at 3 volts. Here's your first rule of circuits. How many volts must I have lost going through the resistor? Yep. You know what? Stop, 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 stop. Because we know it's always a voltage loss, we don't even bother putting a negative. We just say, you lost 5 volts. If you were to measure using the voltmeters that we played with, if you were to touch them to either end of that resistor, the thing would go to the number 5 on your voltmeter. Okay. The amount of flow of uh, current through the circuit depends on a couple of things. It depends on the total amount of, what does the letter R stand for? Resistance. 
and the total, what does the capital V stand for? Voltage applied to the curve, to the circuit. In fact, it's going to lead us to a law. The law is called Ohm's Law, named after a scientist whose last name was Ohm. And it's the law that you can use. That and one more thing lets you solve almost any circuit on the planet. We're going to see if we can derive it. What can be said about the current flow in each case? So think as our metaphor, current flow is how easy it is to send students running through the hallways. What if you had a high resistance? What if the hallways were really, really crowded? Do you think you'd get more current or less current? Do you think you'd get more students able to run through the hallways or less students to run through the hallways? High resistance means lower current. Can I use an arrow pointing down for lower? And I for current? What about low resistance, like an empty hallway? Okay. By the way, <clears throat> really what we're saying is, if the material that you're using doesn't let electrons pass very easily, we call that a high resistance. I've got to get a big current. If the material you're using has a very low resistance, it lets electrons pass really easily, you get a lot of current. What about if you have a high voltage? Let's go to my ski hill analogy. Let's suppose a ski hill has a high voltage. What that means is it's a really, really big hill. What's more popular among hardcore skiers, big hills or bunny hills? So what'll have more skiers on it, a big hill or a bunny hill? What'll have more current, high voltage or low voltage? Oh yeah, same, same thing. Er, current is big, current is high, current is low. But what I really want you to notice is we have a bit of an opposite thing going on here. When resistance is big, current gets small. When voltage is big, current gets big. And vice versa. This is Ohm's law. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as the resistance increases, the current decreases. Or you could put a capital I there. How? Why? Well, resistance slows down the flow of electrons. They bump into more things along the way, which allows the load, the light bulb, whatever, to convert electrical energy into other forms. What was voltage measured in? No. Nope. What was yeah. voltage measured in? Yeah. What was voltage measured in? Volts. What was current measured in? Resistance is measured in ohms. Named after a scientist whose last name was? Ohm. Now, we use a capital A for amps as our symbol. I for current, but for the unit A. We use a capital V for volts as our symbol. Why wouldn't we want to use a capital O? What number would that look way too much like? We try and avoid that, because that might be confusing. You might think all of your answers were zero. Or if you said five ohms, it would look like the number 50. What? So instead, we use a Greek letter. Looks like this. Sort of looks like a mouse hole in a wall. It's a Greek letter omega. That's a Greek letter O. Danielle, what did you learn in school today? I don't know, mummy. It was all Greek to me. No, Greek? Yeah. So what is resistance? It's the property of matter that resists or opposes the easy movement of electrons. Okay, put the calculator away. 
Cole, I'm talking to you. Put the calculator down. Okay. What is resistance? It's the property of matter that resists the movement of electrons. You can sort of think of it, I guess, kind of, as a form of friction slowing down electrical flow in a circuit. It's almost like an electric speed limit, sort of. High resistance would be a school zone. Low resistance would be a freeway. What can affect resistance? I have a picture for you. It says, look at the following. Did I give you the pictures in your notes? I can't remember. I did. Look at the following diagram. I have some straw pictures. Try to rank the straw arrangements from easiest to most difficult if you were using them to breathe through. So here's what I'd like you to do on your own, just by guessing. Put a one next to the easiest, easiest, all the way down to put a four next to the hardest. Go with what you think the correct answer is. Oh, I gotta stop this now, Mr. Duick. There we go, too many songs going. Which of those do you think would have the lowest resistance? Okay. In other words, if you add more wires to a circuit, every time you add a wire that gives the electrons another ski run to go down. Let's them choose. Which of these do you think would have the toughest resistance, the highest resistance, the toughest to breathe through? right there, where the straw gets really, really, really what? Bent, but what about the opening in the straw? What happens when you really small? Smaller wires have more resistance. The thinner the wire, the higher the resistance, because you're trying to cram more electrons through a thinner area. That's why if you look, for example, the cable vision wires leading to your TV, big and thick, lots of current. We don't want resistance. We don't want it to heat up. Is that OK, Alex? Sorry, Alex. Is that OK, Nick? Yeah. Got an Alex that sits here in my last block. Still there. Um, what do you think between the top and bottom? The longer the wire, that also builds up resistance. It's why we try never to have extra wire. So for example, if you have an ethernet cable, I used to have one in what is currently Mr. Lemon's room. I used to teach in that room, and I had to have run an Ethernet cable up the ceiling all the way here and down here. And once I plugged into my computer, it ran slow because there was so much wire to force the electrons through. Shorter wire is better. Is that OK? OK. So we're going to finish off with this right here. So high resistance, electrons move more. which means they tend to give off more heat energy. So they lose more voltage going through that resistor. In a low resistance, electrons move. So they tend to give off less heat energy. So they lose less voltage based on what you know of science so far does that make sense okay electricity is nice it kind of makes sense we're going to pause here i'm going to give you the 8.2 homework to get a start on right now i think you can finish